I'm Al Worden, and I flew as Command Module Pilot on Apollo 15, which was a lunar flight. It was the fourth manned lunar landing mission in the Apollo program. We launched on July 26, 1971, and returned on August 7th of that year. Uh, I think the most memorable part of the flight for me uh, was when I did what we call an extravehicular activity or spacewalk, and that was to recover some film that I had in an open bay uh, in the service module. Uh, I made two trips out, brought the film back, made a third trip out, and uh, stood up on the outside of the spacecraft uh, and just looked around, and uh, I could see both the Earth and the Moon. Absolutely uh, unbelievable, uh, unique place to be, and uh, of course I was the first one in the program to do that Deep Space EVA. My uh, spacewalk, if you will, lasted 39 minutes. Uh, I tried to stay out longer, but I couldn't think of anything to do. <laughs> And uh, I had trained so well for that that uh, I really accomplished what I needed to do rather quickly. Uh, so 39 minutes was it, and I had to get back inside. Um, but because we were about 196, 196,000 miles from Earth, uh, it became a Guinness record as the first deep space spacewalk or extravehicular activity. The training for spacewalk is kind of a two-part program. Uh, the procedural part of the spacewalk, I did a lot of that in an underwater tank where we put on suits and became neutrally buoyant and, and it's a little bit like space except you've got to work against the water. Um, th th to make it more realistic, uh, I trained also in what we call a zero-g airplane where an airplane would fly in a, in a parabolic trajectory and over the top you get, a, you get weightlessness for about 30 seconds. Uh, and during that 30 seconds, I do little pieces of what I had to do uh, on the spacewalk. Uh, but that was more realistic than the water tank to me and, uh, and provided the best training. Yeah, man. But I did a lot of that. I did a lot of that. And I was pretty well prepared when we actually made the spacewalk. I have a different view of the value of the Apollo program than maybe most people have. Uh, to me, uh, the great result of the Apollo program was technology that was developed to make the program possible. And I, I'll give you a couple of examples. One is back in the late 1950s, the U.S. developed a thing called a silicon chip. And with silicon chips, we made solid state devices like what you have in your camera. Uh, and we also had to learn how to work with metals like titanium, how to braze. How, how, how to join, how to work with, how to form titanium, which was something that was unknown at the time. These kinds of technology developments, when filtered down through government programs into uh, commercial companies, are what made America so economically successful for the next 30, 40 years. I think that, was a, I think that is the most important thing uh, coming out of the space program. The fact that we already had launch vehicles and spacecraft being developed as we are announcing Artemis makes it very different from Apollo. Because when Apollo was first announced by John Kennedy, we had nothing, nothing. We had to start from scratch. Artemis, that stuff is already there. And we have civilian companies that are also in the space business like SpaceX and Blue Origin and Sierra Nevada and Boeing, all in the space business that can contribute and they're all already building their spacecraft. So Artemis comes along after all this has happened, and now we name a program, uh, and, our, and our president has been um, rather strong about that. The other difference between John Kennedy and Donald Trump is when John Kennedy announced the lunar program and said we're gonna do that within 10 years, he had the support of the whole company and Congress. Donald Trump has to fight for every nickel that Congress gives him because Congress is so divided between Republicans and Democrats that they cannot agree on anything. So I think it's gonna be very difficult uh, to, to, to complete Artemis as envisioned by President Trump.